Those who train for the longest amount of time get better faster. Many pro players maintain peak mental energy long enough to train for 6 to 12 hours every single day. But this is much easier said than done. And I'm sure that you've even tried it yourself, grinding extremely hard, playing for hours and hours over the course of a few days or weeks, and really pushing your own limits. As a result, your skills likely improved, but eventually, you lost the motivation to train that hard. You basically just burned out. And this is the greatest barrier to success in esports. If we never lost motivation, confidence, or mental energy, we'd be able to train for a ridiculous amount of time each day, and as a result, make much greater progress. So what do you do to prevent physical, mental, and emotional fatigue? Well, as it turns out, it's less about what we do while we're actually in the game and more about what we do outside the game. And with the right type of distractions and implementing some new skills, you might just be able to recover faster from longer training sessions, improve your confidence and mental resilience, and boost your mental performance by 16% or more. So let's say that you've been training for 8 hours every single day for the past 2 weeks to boost your rank. During this time, you've turned down offers to hang out with friends and attend social events, and the performance benefits of this sacrifice are beginning to show. Your increased training time has made you sharper than ever, and you're starting to be more and more respected as you improve your rank. But eventually, you wake up not quite feeling like yourself. You feel a little lonely and a little physically anxious. But you try to push through it, you boot up your PC and get back to playing online matches to pursue your goals. But as you play, you begin to feel on edge, and any little bit of abuse you get from your teammates seems to sting a lot more than usual. Eventually it all piles up, and you begin to doubt yourself, but you keep playing, you keep hoping that things will turn around. But slowly, you begin to recognize this game that you were once loving a week ago is beginning to feel more like a punishment as you struggle to shake the thought that you're just not doing that well. Okay, so what should you do now? Well, the problem is that training and playing too much can cause overthinking, anxiety, and burnout. It can also hinder your ability to perform at your peak skills. Fortunately, the right type of social distraction may be the antidote you need. In fact, social distraction isn't just a nice to have, but may be necessary for your success in esports. Being a high performer means that you will inevitably experience dips in your confidence from time to time, but what separates great players from everyone else is the ability to bounce back from these moments of low self-esteem. You may have had an off day in which you lost a few too many rounds. If moments like these usually shake your confidence levels, you might start to think things like, oh, man, why do I suck today? Or oh, there must be something wrong with me. And because you're emotionally on edge, you start to believe and remember these statements more and more, which then causes you to play worse. Now this causes confidence to dip even more and so the cycle continues. Psychologists call this process the downward spiral, and it's a nightmare for your confidence. Toxic self-talk leads to poor performance, leading to low self-confidence, leading to more toxic self-talk, and so on. Fortunately, having supportive friends, family, and teammates around you can act as a buffer from this effect. They can do this by providing both emotional support and informational support. During times when we feel stressed or lonely, emotional support from friends who care about our well-being can rapidly reduce such negative emotions and allow us to become more resilient in the days to come. But support can also come in the form of the informational sense, through guidance, advice, information, and mentoring. If we aren't feeling confident in our skills, Asking the right questions and getting advice might be exactly what we need to solve our problems and reclaim that confidence. So start by seeking emotional support by talking to people who are going through similar experiences and can offer support and empathy. And be sure to emotionally support them as well. 
relationships are a two-way street, and by uplifting others, we'll be able to boost those around us, develop better relationships, and even enhance our own confidence. After this, begin to seek informational support by first investing in your friend's success and being encouraging of it. Even just seeing our friends succeed is also a great way to boost our own confidence. Psychologists call this confidence through vicarious experience. But then you can take it a step further by seeking their advice. When we look to others for information, it makes them feel like we're giving them a sort of compliment, treating them kind of like a master. So by asking them for guidance or advice, you'll also boost them up. But of course, their knowledge might be exactly what you need to overcome significant problems and then regain your confidence and momentum. But beyond the benefits for our confidence and emotional well-being, social supports might have far more interesting benefits when it comes to our direct performance. Medical journalist Maria Kohut writes that when we spend time with friends and families, our bodies release hormones such as oxytocin and dopamine, which lowers stress levels and boosts your mood. These hormones have also been shown to reduce mental fatigue by 16% and are proven to increase mental resilience. And anyone who's trained hard at any game knows that mental fatigue is a major barrier to improvement. If you can only train for a few hours before mental fatigue kicks in, you'll be at a major disadvantage compared to those players who can train for hours on end at peak mental energy. So socializing may be the best way for our minds to fully recover from mental fatigue and then allow us to train for longer. But studies also show that these hormones are five times more prevalent in elite athletes than compared to the general public. This implies that these social hormones might be crucial in the mentality of top performers and might make the difference between you being a good player and being an all-time great player. In fact, these hormones might also boost your brain function. Research in 2011 found that those who regularly interacted with others performed an average of 15% better at executive functioning tasks compared to those who spent more time alone. So simply hanging out with your best friends, developing deeper connections with your teammates, and seeking more supportive social connections may just be exactly what you need to keep your mind sharp and healthy for competition. But if you're struggling with any sort of social confidence or can't seem to connect deeper with those around you, I recommend checking out some resources like YouTube channels like Charisma on Command or Jordan Harbinger's free course called Six Minute Networking. Social skills, like any skills you develop in esports, can take a long time to master, but it's worth digging deeper into if it leads to having more fulfilling relationships and ultimately improving your well-being, mental energy, and in-game performance. But as a quick tip for better relationships, consider the kind of conversations you're having and the questions you're asking to lead those conversations. When we connect with one another, we can keep things relatively surface level and just kind of ask one another about basic facts of our life. Or we can dig deeper and ask about emotions and the personal reasons behind our actions. When we are able to connect with others on that emotional deeper level, it leads to more fulfilling conversations and helps build stronger relationships. Jordan Harbinger digs deeper into this in a podcast and uses the FEW acronym to remember it. What you can and should do is ask questions. Even if you have to come up with a list of them beforehand, write it in your phone if you have to. Things about job and career, family stuff, ask about pets. Use the following formula, FEW, few, facts, emotions, and why. FEW. So when you're asking about the facts, you might say something like, where are you working these days? And that gets you facts. Oh, I work at Chipotle in corporate. Okay. And emotions. How do you like working there? What's the biggest challenge working there? What do you like about what you're working on right now? That kind of thing. Those types of emotion-based questions will elicit emotion-based answers, which is better than fact. And then the why is what makes it a real connection and what makes it really interesting. You can say, what makes you want to do that kind of work? 
or was there something that when you were younger sparked an interest in doing work with supply chain management, especially food? And they might say, well, my dad owned a restaurant and I was a terrible cook, but I like being in the food space. I just, I'm more of a numbers guy. Oh, okay, interesting. So now you're having a real conversation. F-E-W, facts, emotions, and why. So start asking more questions and better questions. Now, of course, conversations are two-sided, so don't treat it like an interview. Be sure to share your own ideas, experiences, and emotions along the way. But ultimately, by making it a conscious effort to be more curious about those around you and asking questions, digging deeper into their emotions and motivations, you'll begin to spark the kind of conversations and relationships that lead to better emotional resilience, confidence, and peak mental performance. In today's society, there's constant pressure to be grinding and hustling to outwork the competition. And while there is value in hard work and outworking others, we need to find balance, not only so we feel better, but to actually enhance our training and performance. Most pros can focus and train for such long periods because they've periodically built themselves up to that level of focus. But even they are training in highly social environments alongside their teammates and coaches. So before attempting an insane training program or crazy practice hours, consider the relationships you can rely on for mentally resetting and continue to hone the connections you have with friends and teammates. Despite our cultural norm to honor individual skills and encourage a lone wolf mindset, it's necessary to remind yourself that you need others to stay balanced, to maintain your confidence, and to push you closer to your full potential. I hope you guys love this video. And if you want more from eAthlete Labs or just want to help support the channel, then also check out the Esports Elite course. It's basically a bootcamp style step by step course for helping you improve your game sense, your mechanical skills, and your mindset. It teaches you a ton about the science behind how to improve most effectively and helps pull it all into a 66 day challenge. So if you wanna check that out, learn more, and even see some of the reviews from past students, then I'll leave a link for that in the description and in the pinned comment below. But of course, as always, I hope you guys love this video and I'll see you all in the next one.